What's up, tweakers? Ryan here from Tweak My Device. You know, the great thing about Android, or one of the great things, is its flexibility, um, its open sourceness, if you will. Android can be run on a number of different hardware platforms. Case in point, I'm going to show you how to mount an Android system version 2.3 gingerbread onto a little USB stick like this or a little micro SD card reader like this. So, okay, I have Android on one of these little sticks, an entire Android system. What am I going to do with it? You can plug it into a netbook. You can plug it into a laptop. You can basically plug it into any Windows machine. And if you can get into the BIOS, you can tell it to boot this Android. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So check the link below this video and it's going to take you to this web page. This works on Asus ePCs and laptops, the ViewSonic ViewPad, the Dell Inspiron Mini, the Samsung Q1U, Viliv S5, and the Lenovo ThinkPad. It may work on other devices. These are the ones that it's just been confirmed to work on. Tells you a little bit more about the software. There were some screenshots. But what you want is this build right here the x86 2.3 rc1 this is as of the end of august 2011 very recent so you're going to click that download it save it to your desktop the next step will be to format your usb stick or your thumb drive so go ahead and put it in your computer and auto play box should pop up and you can click to open to view files there, it's empty. I've already formatted it. Or if you go into my computer, you can see the drive right here. I've already named it Android x86. You want to right click on that USB stick and format it. Go ahead and continue through that warning. So good. Now we're formatted. You're going to need an ISO tool. I'm using Ultra ISO Run as Administrator. We're going to say yes sir to that. Then Ultra ISO comes up. Ultra ISO is a very nice little tool. It lets you mount things on different storage drives that you would normally find on CDs. And this is great for a netbook or a tablet um, when they don't have a CD drive. So you simply burn the CD information onto a different media. And in this case, we're using a thumb drive. It works very well. So we want to open, let's open the file we've downloaded. And here it is. Here's the file we downloaded from the link below this video. And let's go ahead and select that. All right, you really don't need to mess with anything here. It just shows you what is in this package. Go up here to bootable and let's write a disk image. Alright, our SanDisk Cruiser is selected. And let's go ahead and write to that. It's going to tell you basically it'll wipe everything out first. But we've already formatted it so it's all good. Very good. No errors. Burn successful. We can just go ahead and close this. We can actually close Ultra ISO. You want to properly disconnect your storage. Here's the victim, a little Asus EPC. These are sick little netbooks. These things are the equivalent to the original droid. Uh, these little netbooks are very hackable. You can run all kind of things on them. All right, just to show you what version I'm on, I'm going to click into Computer Properties. This is Windows 7 Ultimate and our genuine Microsoft seal of approval. So, what do we do? Now that we have the image on our nice little thumb drive here, it's all portable. We've got Android. We're carrying Android in our back pocket. We're going to carry it right on in to this EPC. If you don't already have scheduled restore points set for 
your EPC or your tablet or whatever else you're about to put Android on, go ahead and set a restore point and do a backup, whatever you want to do to make sure your information is safe. I can't guarantee your results, but I'm showing you as I'm doing it on my own equipment and I'm going to show you that it works. So just follow along very carefully. I always recommend a backup before any modifications. We're just going to shut down. So once your EPC is powered off, just plug this thumb drive in. And right after we power this thing on, we're going to repeatedly tap the F2 key. This should get us into the BIOS so we can tell it to boot the thumb drive. So let's get started. Power and release. F2. Keep tapping. This is where you need to be, the BIOS setup utility. Use your directional arrows, go to the right to boot, scroll down, and let's hit enter. We're going to set the boot device priority. Now you'll need to press your plus button until you get SanDisk Cruiser as the first boot device. Tap escape once. Now select hard drives and hit enter. And again, just press plus until you get SanDisk Cruiser at the top of the list or whatever thumb drive you're using. That just happens to be a SanDisk Cruiser that I'm using. All right, once those are at the top of the list for both, we can go back in here and check it even. Good, escape, go back and check this one. All right. They're both set, so hit F10 to save and exit. Enter to select OK. Now we're at the installer screen. These top two options let you run Android from the USB stick, but I want to install it to a partition on the hard drive. Okay, this top option should be your hard drive. So I'm going to enter to select that. And I'll select Do Not Format because we don't want to lose everything in the Windows system that's already on here. And select Yes for the Grub bootloader. Yes to confirm a boot item. and this will let you read and write data to your system. Hit yes. Hit yes to save user data. You can proceed with creating a fake SD card because in order to access data with this Android system, it needs to be labeled under an SD card. Fortunately, this Asus EPC has an SD card slot, so I'll be using that. But that's just an option for you if your machine doesn't have an SD card slot. We're just going to go to Run Android. And that's new. We've got Android on there instead of Windows. Congratulations, guys. Look at that. There's your notification pull down. Check out all your apps. This version has an included app store, although it's not the official Android market. I figured out a few hard key shortcuts. This one brings up the menu, and the Windows key will always return you home. The escape key is the same as hitting back on your Android device. And if we just take a look down here in settings, you have all of your Android settings. This is really awesome. And you can see we're on Gingerbread 235. Here's the kernel version and the build number down here. This is awesome. So you may need to make changes to your BIOS on your PC to tell it which operating system to start up first. There we go. 
So head over here to boot, select hard, hard disk drives, and if you go into hard disk drives, you want to make sure your hard drive is at the top. You don't want to have the USB as the first one because we don't want to always have the USB connected. And for boot device priority, let's have hard drive selected. And we'll F10 and exit. Now, when you get to the screen, move the highlight immediately. It only gives you five seconds until it chooses a selection. So cool, this is what you want. Now that you've installed Android and configured your BIOS appropriately, all you have to do is just turn on your device, I just hit the power button, and move the cursor immediately. It only gives you five seconds before it automatically selects one. You'll have three modes to choose from. HDPI is a little bit lower resolution, so things on your home screen are going to look larger. MDPI gives you more of a higher resolution looking screen. It makes your screen look bigger because everything on it is smaller. You'll be able to fit a few more things on there and read more within the same screen without having to scroll. Debug mode, as it's starting up, it just goes through a script and checks for errors. Or we can choose Windows. So I'm going to select the HDPI first to show you that. And there's our lock screen. How sweet is that? So let's grab our mouse cursor, unlock it, and keep in mind guys, you could plug in just a little tiny USB dongle in the side of your EPC and control the mouse that way. I'm not sure if this version of Android on here will support video output, but I'll check that out. This EPC does have a VGA port, so I'll try to connect it to one of my 23-inch monitors and check that out and see if you can do video output with this thing. That would be pretty sweet. Now we've booted into MDPI mode and as you can see everything is a lot smaller. It basically makes it look like a higher resolution screen. It changes the LCD density. In the app drawer you'll notice that all the apps fit without scrolling and you'll be able to fit a few more widgets and things on your screen. So there you have it guys, run Android off of a portable USB thumb drive, drop it onto your netbook, we've got Android on tablets, we've got Android on smartphones, just go ahead and put Android on your grandma, we're going to Android the entire earth pretty soon. So I hope you enjoyed this, I hope it helps you out, not 100% sure how I'm really going to use this yet, but it's just cool that you can do it. The next thing I'm going to try to do is put Android on my Pioneer AVIC in dash touchscreen stereo. That runs a version of Windows, and if you can emulate it on this Windows PC, maybe you can emulate it in the car as well. Stay tuned, subscribe to Tweak My Device on YouTube.